presentations, but I had another commitment also. Uh, my community, the area that I represent, is uh, greatly impacted by freight movement. And uh, while it creates jobs, uh, there's a, an impact on the communities that sometimes becomes adverse. I uh, want to ask if you feel we should include a freight movement program in the next transportation bill, and should we prioritize projects to mitigate the negative impacts that freight has in our communities? Mr. Chairman and Representative Napolitano, <clears throat> ASHTO supports maintaining the federally funded state administered nature of the program that served the nation well for the past 100 years. And retaining that federal state relationship <coughs> ensures that federal funding goes to projects that are in the national interest. I'm sorry, I'm. My concern has been that uh, while we, in, in my area, the Alameda Quarter, uh, brings in uh, over 45 to 55 percent of the uh, uh, um, goods to the eastern seaboard. And it has an impact because the whole quarter goes through my district. And it has environmental impacts, safety impacts, um, th there are other things. And so w w those cities that have that kind of impact, do you not believe that we should address it in the next transportation bill to allow the communities to have some uh, assistance in doing, whether it's quad gates, whether it's uh, grade separations, whether it's amelioration of the uh, uh, negative impact. Uh, Mr. Chairman and, and Representative, I apologize for answering, beginning to answer the wrong question here. Um, is your question with regard to a, a separate freight program or just addressing the impacts in those impacts? Either areas? or. Whatever okay. works to help our communities mm -hmm. uh, uh, be able to uh, deal with this negative impact. I believe there is probably an appropriate role for a, attempting to address the impact of freight on any portion of the system. Have you uh, had any cities address this, this impact, this negative impact? Uh, thank that question. Uh, let me. Let me put this in very concrete terms in Salt Lake City. Uh, we are a major corridor for, for railroad yeah. freight and for freight moving through. Um, those freight corridors have a huge impact on really segregating portions and neighborhoods in our community. And when we try to have crossings um, of those railroads in particular, uh, it's very difficult. And it has actually prevented us from moving forward, for example, with a streetcar line going into one neighborhood because there is some rule in place that prevents streetcars from crossing railroad tracks. And yet, so it keeps us from serving a neighborhood the way we should be able to. So those kinds of issues for us to be able to address would be enormously helpful at the community level. Have you proposed anything in that area? Simply because I know it isn't just California. It's got to be other states that have the same feeling of not being able to move forward, like you say, on your or your rail car, on your uh, streetcar. Uh, how do we address it so that we are all aware that it isn't a one-size-fits-all, but rather that we all have different areas where we could get help? Well, in our case, we've had great difficulty working with the railroads themselves. So providing some authority or some direction for us to be able to address the safety needs, but not just provide the complete discretion with the private railroad company saying we can't across their railroad in a way that we know can be done safely. Great. Well, that, that's a big issue. And of course, I, I've always uh, tasked the railroad to put on, uh, pony up more money for the great separations because they only deal with about 3 percent of it, even though there might be a little bit more in some areas. The other question I have is for Mayor Becker. Um, <clears throat> we just uh, passed a temporary uh, Department of Transportation advantage of uh, hiring locally. How do you see that helping your cities and your communities? Well, it's, it's critical for us, obviously, to be able to use a very well qualified and committed workforce uh, to be able to provide employment in our areas. And I know even in this state legislative session that just passed that we uh, included a preference for local hiring um, in, uh, in, in future projects. So uh, we build that into our project at a community level to the extent that is done at the federal level. We think that provides benefits to the economy and is probably much more efficient. Will, will it help then uh, some of the communities that have a very uh, high unemployment rate? Uh, certainly. It's, uh, <coughs> fortunately, I, I can say that Salt Lake City doesn't, we are at about 3 percent or less unemployment right now. But 
but being able to provide uh, the kind of direction that keeps money in local hands always provides not only local jobs but a greater multiplier. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Time, we'll turn the time over to uh, Mr. Woodall.